Hey YouTube, Roy Marco with Roy Marco's Garage. Today, 57 Chevy gets Willwood disc brakes on the front. Part number is 140-14663. Uh, okay. Inside that box we got a Willwood uh, calipers. And these are caliper numbers 120-13551 uh, and then BK stands for black. You got your Willwood caliper with uh, four piston. Uh, when you have, depending on how this caliper goes on left or right, you have bleeder screws on each end because you always want to bleed at the top. You have your entry point here for your uh, line. This kit does not come with the brake lines. You have to buy those separately, which I don't have yet. I do got the Willwood master cylinder in there. These are the brake pads. Not exactly sure what compound these are, but uh, that come in this kit as well. And that is uh, part number 150-8850K. We have all our hardware here. Being that this uh, brake kit is available uh, with this kit, it does both 55, 6 and 7 Chevys, as well as some Corvettes. Uh, it does the 63 to 64 VET. 59 to 64 Impala so this is the setup that you would use for the Impala installation and this is for the Tri-5 installation so that's what we're doing moves the calipers to the front these are the caliper brackets that allow that to happen once we pull the backing plates off of the spindles these caliper these caliper brackets will go on we have our shims here that we will be using on the Tri-5 install okay then you got your um, bearing pack here with the seal and the lock washer your castle nut and your uh, cutter key okay or cutter pin also your cap to cop, cap that off you got both left and right for that comes with two rotors rotor numbers are one six zero one four six five three these are dual drilled for dual bolt pattern whether you want to run the ford like four and a half on five or dodge the chevy is the bigger bolt pattern the 4.75 on on five um, these rotors are 11 and a half inch. I've never seen this before. You take these bolts and you thread them in from the back side. And I think that's a silly idea for a couple of reasons. Maybe for racing it's okay, but uh, for street use, if you got to take and put a wheel nut on, it's just going to start backing the bolt off. Now you say, yep, you torque them down and they should never happen, which you're probably right. You also would use a little bit of Loctite in there, but heat is what you use to actually uh, break Loctite down to be able to take something apart it's Loctited so brakes get hot it makes no sense to me why I'd use this system and it upgrades his uh, stud size from 7 16 to half inch which will be different wheel nuts on the front and the back and since he's not planning on upgrading the back wheel studs to a bigger size and he's using factory sort of GM Corvette uh, rally wheels I don't want to have to drill the wheels out, I don't want to have to do all that kind of stuff. So this is the original stud from uh, 55, 6, 7 for the front. And this is the, what I picked up for it. The knurl, uh, just before the knurl is exactly a half inch. I can drill out these threads which will give me exactly a half inch hole with a half inch drill bit. And then put the stud in from the back. And then when I suck it through, that stud will be coming through and you'll have the stud that we need for the wheels so that's what i'm going to do with these and we'll get them on and that's the wheelwood kit so we'll get it on the car i'll show you the process of doing so check uh so these wheel studs here at the base are basically 0 0.05 which is half inch there and just before the knurling it's a little bit smaller and then of course the knurling is 504 a few thousandths there a half inch drill bit is 0.497 so it's perfect size for this we're gonna drill out the threads on the five bigger for the foot for the bigger bolt pattern on these rotors and pull those studs through so i have to do that on both rotors and get them ready and impact the wheel uh, bearings get that ready of course we're finished pulling off the backing plates right now the wheels just sitting here uh, got most of the taken apart stuff to pull off the 
backing plate and that. Okay. All right, so we got the stud in. Uh, what happened was I bought these little studs and not realizing how thick. Anyway, I thought this would be long enough and it wasn't. So I ended up getting a stud that was a little longer up, right up basically flush with the casting here. So let me show you how I do this. Um, I don't recommend using a hand drill because it's hard to get the hole straight. So we come over here to the drill press. Studs in. I'm gonna blow all this off. Everything down to the backing plate on the top here. I just loosen this off. That holds on your wheel cylinder. We won't be using this anymore, but I'll be saving this for possibly other restoration parts when you need to uh, do a car with drum brakes. Just got the bottom two bolts to undo. You can sit there with pliers and try and get the car to pin out, or just get your impact on there. <laughs> There's a carter fin in here with a castle nut. So let me just uh, show you over here. Put the uh, wrench on there. Impact. Okay. Slide off the back and plate bolt. And we're down to our spindle. Also that will loosen off your steering arm here. But that's okay, the new hardware will catch that. I'm just going to go ahead and clean off some of the dirt and grease on this be able to install the bracket. Just so, take some Varsol, clean off everything here. There's a wire brush, clean things up. Okay. One thing I like to do is just take a file and on surfaces like this where we know it has to fit flat and just give it a, a nice flat draw file and just take off any high points if you're not trying to reshape the metal. Okay, I don't want to get on there with a power tool because you could uh, go too far too fast and then this requires a 35,000 shim and you don't want it to be out of alignment so anywhere where the bolts go I like to just hand file a nice flat surface take off any any rust so that when you put your next piece on your bracket it sits nice and flat just like that doesn't take much on the steering link here we got the same thing just a couple of nice surfaces there where the steering link goes to the back. Again, we're just knocking off anything that's high points. We're not trying to reshape the metal here. Now that we're here, I'm gonna get the grease gun and hit all these grease nipples. As you can see, I don't have any steering attached here and this is fairly stiff. So that equates to having some fairly stiff steering. Supplied bracket goes on here from Willwood. Now, you could, you really have to, this bracket's designed to put the caliper on the front here. Most of the time, your caliper would be on the back on a lot of these kits. But the way this Willwood one is designed with the steering arm in place, you wouldn't be able to access getting the uh, lower bolt in for your uh, caliper. So we're going to just install it the way they ask. We're going to get our steering arm in place. Want to put Loctite on our hardware here, supplied nuts, and this top bolt has to go in to get some Loctite on that. 
They supply a 15,000 thick shim in the kit which has to go behind here and then this special bolt that threads in on the top and this bolt has to be torqued to 140 foot-pounds as you can see these two bolts are loose yet because you have to tighten down these three pieces of hardware and then we can tighten down that Torque these down, 47 foot-pounds. Double check. The torque wrench to 140 foot-pounds. Okay. okay. Did you get it? No, show Ready? it again. Keep your head up. Okay. There we go. 140 foot pounds, 47 foot pounds. Then, when you finish with your torque wrench, just always back them off. Angle it. Be turning the wheel back and forth. Okay. Wash my hands off. Gonna just clean your surfaces. Lucas, red and tacky. Wheel bearing grease. We have to open up our stock of wheel bearings. inner bearing, your seal, your nut, cutter key, washer, okay, the washer nut key don't need to get loaded with grease, now we just take our bearing, proper way to repack a wheel bearing is to load up the palm of your hand or you can use one of those fancy tools get the bearing you see this gap here you want to capture grease with that bearing and you just keep going back and forth and as you can see it actually pushes the grease through the bearing and then you slowly rotate as you go in the palm of your hand you actually pull see how it's hydraulic pushing the grease all the way through this is what you call packing the wheel bearings if you just rub the grease on the surface it's you're just gonna burn up your wheel bearings if you notice my hand will almost be completely clean of all that grease so all that grease got into the bearing and I've made it all the way around okay now you can do the surface you also want to get some inside here I'm just gonna take bunch of it and put it there don't worry if you get a little bit of grease on the rotor right now you can always clean that off after just you want to do that you want to put your your bearing in any grease that's left over this is all clean you can just put it back in there okay now what I do is I just see my, my hand is almost completely free of all that grease I put in it packing that bearing all right then we want to put in our seal. This seal keeps dirt out and the grease in. 
usually want to have something that's the same size as the seal to seat that. That sounds, change the sound, that means it's seated in there all the way. You want to take and clean off the outside edge. You don't want any of that grease on the outside to get on the brakes. That's a good idea to take a little bit of that grease and do the seal. But you don't have any, you don't want a dry seal when you're installing it. I'm just going to slide that rotor right onto our spindle. Now I'm going to go ahead and pack the smaller bearing, the outer bearing. So you can see I'm putting quite a bit of grease in my hand. If I just were to rub the outside of that bearing I wouldn't get it all in so again you want to fill that outer edge. I don't like using, they make a tool that's like two cones and you use a grease gun. Now one you got to keep refilling your grease gun to, you know with grease to be able to uh, do the wheel bearings and number two it's that tool is always a mess. It's laying in your toolbox somewhere or in a cupboard. I like the old method this way. I get to actually see it and fill up the uh, actual bearing. And there's nothing like a good moisturizer cream like good old fashioned wheel bearing grease. So I'm going to throw in some grease on this side. Then you take your bearing, knock out the grease in the middle, and put it in. Then when you put the outer bearing on, we go. It's good you have enough grease in there when you put the outer bearing on and it kind of squeezes through the bearing. That's a good sign. So now I'm just going to clean my hands off. Put the washer on here. There's a little tab that keeps this washer from spinning so that the bearing doesn't have any influence on the castle nut. Okay. Now I put that castle nut on. Always start it with your fingers because you don't want to cross thread it. Okay. This is an inch and a sixteenth on this one. Now what you're going to do when you're doing wheel bearings like this, any old car, is the first thing you do is you crank it down tight. Okay. Why do you do that? You're not going to be able to turn the rotor and you wouldn't want to leave it like that. It'd burn up the bearing. By cranking it down tight, it pushes all the grease out between the bearing and the seat, so you don't have a false reading uh, on your preload. Then you back it off and then basically at this point it's basically finger tight. You just want it to be able to rotate. A little bit of preload, nothing crazy. You can see that's just weight of my hand on there. We line up our cutter key or cutter pin. I always install them this way. Push them down and that way. Some people will put them sideways. I like to go that way. Okay, and then you take your side cutters. I like to bend the one up. Up and over. The other side I like to just cut off flat with the nut. Okay, there's several ways to do that. You can do it any way you want. I'm just going to wipe off the grease on the outside. I know there's some more here yet, but I'll wash that off later. Okay. Put that there. There we go. clean and we can now wash off this rotor because it's not going to affect our get inside anything here just take it out of the foam it says willwood here nicely on this side it's on that side here there's a sticker that comes on here i've had this out i just had to go get some fittings that tells you the uh, pipe thread and we'll talk about that in a minute just, I'm just going to clean off the, the sticker stuff. 
in the instruction booklet that we put two shims in. Number 18 is 35 thousandths thick, so it'll be 70 thousandths worth of shims. Okay. So we put our Loctite on these as well. Put on our 230 or 235 thousandths or 70 thousandths of shim. That goes on here. Tool here. And then these ones get torqued down to 40 foot pounds. It looks like I'm going to have to shot. add a third shim because our caliper is too close on the inside. So that's why they supply you extra shims. Put a triple stack on the top. Okay. A brake job, yeah. take your pads out, yeah. just have to slide them in place. So, <laughs> put in your big cotter pin one side this way, yeah, one pin that way, and then we just have to put on our line. The next thing I have to do, I gotta put in this 90 on the back of the caliper. It goes to like a hand style fitting. We have the adapter that goes in from the quarter inch brake line, or 316 sorry brake line, to um, the hose. And this hose here is like a 16 inch hose and that will connect from the caliper to the chassis of the vehicle. I use Loctite 567. I use Loctite 567. Oh, the, this is a five six. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is uh, basic liquid uh, Teflon tape. You put that on the threads. What's nice about this is uh, coats nice. You can wipe off so there's nothing going into your braking system, and we can thread that in back here. This. Then we'll get a wrench. And tighten that up so it faces backwards starting to get tight so we just want to make one more resolution revolution here you're just going into aluminum so you don't want to go too tight so we just want it facing the right way okay basically 90 degrees back Put that there slide the clip in Got a few love taps. Perfect. That's in there. What we want to do now, we're going to just take and thread this line on here this way. With your fingers. Go back over here. Install it on that side. And get the wrench to tighten it. Get the wrench. Give that a, give that a tighten. Okay, put the big wrench on there, give that a good tighten. Okay, then you can rotate this with a big wrench so that when you steer the wheels, this line will turn and not rub against the rotor or the tire. So we're going to check that right now by turning the wheels. And that line you want to make sure is not making any contact with the tire. Obviously, I don't have the tire on yet. So you might want to rotate that. See how it goes inward here, away from the parts. And then turn it all the way opposite side of the lock. And make sure that the hose has nothing significantly going on there. We just got to do the other side and then our steel lines. And for now, that's how we install 
the wheel wood disc brake conversion for 55, 56, 57 Chevys. Okay, well there you have it. That's putting the wheel wood brakes on, disc brakes instead of the drum brakes. And I'll do an update on when I get the rest of the car. We want to get it running, probably for your next episode, an update. And if you like these videos, please subscribe, hit that like button, ring that bell for notifications. Have yourself a great day. Remember, community, not competition. I'll see you next week. It has the castle nut uh, cutter key or cutter pin and then uh, your washer with the lock thing on it that uh, keeps it from turning. So there's that. The lock thing on it? Well, it's lock washer. Lock okay. washer. Well, then say lock washer. So that. So you can catch my phone ring. Need to wash a car. This is a great opportunity. You get out the old soap and you spray it on. Go. Anyway, take your rag, agitate, go, and then the rain will rinse it, and that's how you wash your car in the rain.